kind of want to ease into a training rhythm, I think. Um, I got there and I got really excited and I said, hey, let's do all this. But, um, you know, when you travel overseas, especially that one, that was a weird, you know, time zone difference. This one's going to be a little bit better. Um, I definitely want to just ease my way into it. I think, you know, training and being conscious of that will be great. My coach, Atanas Atanasov, and I have a really good relationship, you know, um, saying what we can handle, what we kind of want to plan out for the week. So I'm really excited. I'm, and I'm hoping that, you know, I'll, I, since that experience in, in Beijing, I'll just kind of blend right into this, this one without any hiccups. I, I would say that moving on from event to event to not get too upset if something goes bad or not to get too excited if something goes really well, that's, that's the biggest thing I've learned. Jeremy, you mentioned in the mix zone how hard it is for decathletes to get financial support and sponsorships. Do you feel like easing the sponsorship rules in Rule 40 would help your event? Easing the sponsorships in Rule 40? Easing? Easing the restrictions on like how many sponsorships oh, you can display oh, and what yeah. you can do during the event. Okay, so like other other brand, other non like sports brands, stuff like that. Yeah. Um, absolutely. I think you know you know we saw people competing in, in the Los Angeles Olympics, you know, that's just like, you know, our, you know, two generations or a generation ago, and they were able to wear, you know, Ford, Tyson, whatever was on them, and, and that was, and that was really cool, because it's like, people can do that in Formula One racing and NASCAR and all that, and, and it's people who, who want to support, and obviously it's, you know, it's good promo for, for the companies and whatnot, but I think if, if, if the market keeps shifting towards, well, basically I'll say it outright, away from multi-event as athletes and you know it's going to be really tough for this for this thing to keep holding on you know passion knows that um and i know zach simon you know he's, he should get paid for sure let's go with tom and then go ahead as for ashton and ashton for all three of you um, in the past the decathlon champion was so big at the olympics it was so well known now it isn't the same what do you think could be done when actually I mean, you've done such great performances, what, what can be done to get the gap on back to where it was? Uh, I think the questions to ask would be, why was it so popular before, and then what happened to make it fade? But I've noticed a lot of things in general tend to follow um, like an up and down trend. So perhaps in you know four years you'll see decathlon be popular for some unknown reason. And you know, for some unknown reason, it was it started becoming unpopular a while ago. Uh, I'm not sure what to do in order to make it more popular. Uh, I think the media tends to have a lot of say in what gets promoted and not. So maybe if you guys, I don't know. And I, you know, it's not saying anything right now, but it's just like I feel like we perform or we train really hard to perform really well and we set ourselves to really high standards. Athletes are always set to super high standards. Um, what standards are the media setting for themselves? Like, what is it like when you guys compete? Or do you compete at all? Or, you know? It's an interesting question. Great question. Say it again? We're broke too. You're broke too, so there it is. <laughs> We're all straight. <laughs> Do you guys want to sponsor us? How's that? <laughs> the media sponsors us. <laughs>